This is the Lenovo Yoga 9i. It's a thin and light two-in-one device featuring Intel's 12th gen Auto Lake P-Series CPU. Now, to this date, we've been testing the 8 series or high performance offerings from Intel. So we wanted to find out what the efficient side of this architecture had to offer. Plus, it has a beautiful OLED display and a new stylish design. Essentially, this is catered towards people who are looking for an everyday productivity laptop that also comes with a few other perks, which I'll get to later in the video. But as always, let's kick things off with the price. It starts at 1450 US dollars. And for that, you get a Core i7-1260p processor with four performance cores and eight efficiency cores for a total of 16 threads, eight gigabytes of LPDDR5 memory running at 5200 megahertz. Keep in mind that it's soldered onto the PCB. Um, you also get a 256 gigabyte SSD and a 14 inch 1200p IPS touch display. The sample that we have over here costs an extra $200, and that doubles the memory and storage, plus you get an OLED Quad HD touch display at 90 hertz. Now, the base model is a bad deal, just to set the record straight, because eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage is an absolute joke in my opinion. But here's the thing, Lenovo is like Canadian Tire. You never buy anything at full price. So in this case, the base 9i at the time of making this video is going for around 1080 US dollars, which makes it go from a bad deal to a pretty good deal. Unfortunately, the model that we have over here is not available at the moment. Uh, the specs are great, and if you're lucky, you could snag it for around $1,250, but it goes out of stock all the time. It's sadly the same issue that we've, we've been facing since 2021. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the design of the Yoga 9i. Uh, they replaced the Sharpie and sleek look from last year's model with rounded corners and polished edges to emphasize comfort when handling the chassis. And it's spot on. Um, it wouldn't even leave any finger marks when you're, or any wrist marks when you're typing on it for long periods of time. Plus, given that this thing can switch to tablet mode, um, holding it is just a lot more comfortable compared to some of the other thin and light two-in-one devices that I've tested in the past. The all aluminum unibody construction is excellent. The hinge is stiff with no signs of wobble and this oatmeal color, seriously, that's what Lenovo is calling it. Oatmeal? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I mean, it gives it a bespoke finish. Uh, you can also pick it up in gray if you're looking for something subtle. As for size, uh, this is a little bigger compared to the XPS 13 from Dell, but not by all that much. In fact, it's about the same thickness. We're talking 0.6 inches versus 0.58 inches. Uh, it's still not as thin as Microsoft Surface Pro 8 because that device is in its own class, um, but it does come with a premium. The 9i is also fairly lightweight, coming in just a tad over three pounds or 1.4 kilos. So this will easily fit inside your backpack or messenger bag, no problem. The cherry on top of this is that the included power brick is extremely compact. It's only a 65 watt charger and it tops up the laptop via USB-C. The cable is also really long and it supports rapid charge boost. So for 15 minutes of charging, you can actually squeeze up to two hours of use, which is great. The keyboard layout is pretty standard. However, if you pay close attention to the right-hand side, you'll notice a set of dedicated keys to access performance mode, uh, enable the background blur option when you have the webcam turned on. Uh, you can also cycle between different audio profiles for the speakers, switch between light and dark mode within Windows, which I think is pretty cool, and a fingerprint reader. I think these one-click function keys are a nice addition. As for the keys, they're okay. Honestly, I was a little bit let down considering that Lenovo has one of the best laptop keyboards around with excellent travel distance and feedback. But this, it feels like they've taken a lot of life out of the 9i. The key travel is shorter and softer. I think it needs to marinate for a while to get to a comfortable position. Uh, what I love is the fact that it comes with very less key wobble. And I think it's probably one of the upsides of these slimmer uh, switches. The keys are backlit. Uh, it's not the brightest out there, but it'll get the job done for everyday use. The massive trackpad that's sitting underneath is pretty good. Uh, it's a glass surface with precision touchpad support. But throughout my testing period, I noticed that the accuracy was lagging a bit compared to the XPS 13 from Dell or even Lenovo's own ThinkPad series like the X1 Carbon. Uh, even the integrated left and right buttons have sort of a rattling feel when you register them. But 
Other than that, the Surface itself is very smooth uh, to navigate within Windows. Port selection is pretty limited on this 2 in 1 device. On the left hand side, you have a full size USB Type A 3.2 Gen 2 port, a couple of Type C Thunderbolt 4 ports. Uh, towards the right hand side, there's a power button, uh, USB Type C 3.2 Gen 2 port with DisplayPort pass through and power delivery, and an audio jack. It would have been cool to see a full size USB port on this side as well and an HDMI port, uh, but you know, it is what it is. The webcam is a noticeable improvement compared to the previous generation. In fact, I would actually go on record and say that it's much better than Lenovo's own ThinkPad X1 Carbon. And the reason for that is because this year they've implemented a 1080p RGB hybrid camera. So you get a slightly more detail compared to last year's model, plus it supports Windows Hello. Uh, and I want to pay close attention to the uh, background blur feature that they've enabled. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit that right now. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job at isolating the background. And here are my hands. Um, obviously, it's not as good as RTX broadcast, but I mean, for quick toggle that's literally accessible on the keyboard itself, I think it's pretty sweet. Um, the other thing I want to focus your attention to is the microphone quality because it is absolutely incredible. There is very good, uh, you know, background separation. My voice just has a little bit more life to it. it. Doesn't sound too compressed. So let me know what you guys think about yeah, it. Yeah, but what about if there's a guy in the background there's yelling no, at there's you? There's no, there's nobody yelling in the background. That's Dimitri. Stop, stop. <laughs> now the speaker setup on the 9i is pretty interesting and quite unique in my opinion. They position two front-facing tweeters on the hinge bar. Now, the idea behind this is to offer a 360-degree immersive audio experience uh, when you're using this thing in laptop mode and tablet mode. Uh, there are two woofers placed on the uh, edges, and Lenovo has worked with uh, Bowers & Wilkins to offer class-leading performance. Well, it certainly doesn't feel that way, but I'll tell you what. Compared to what I've listened to in the past with thin and light laptops, this is pretty impressive. The trebles are bright and crispy with no distortion. The woofers give you a nice little kick, but it's nothing mind blowing. Bottom line is that this setup sounds much better compared to bottom facing speakers. So Lenovo, good job. The OLED display on the 9i is fantastic. It's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which translates to slightly taller screen real estate, which is a must have for anything productivity related. The colors are stunning with deeper blacks and punchy colors that you would typically expect from an OLED panel. As you can see, it covers 100% sRGB, 96% Adobe RGB, and 99% P3. So it's great for photo editing and Netflixing. Uh, it's also pretty bright too. Our sample was able to achieve a peak sustained level of 393 nits. Um, the cherry on top of all of this is that it is able to run at 90 hertz. So it'll give you a slightly smoother experience when working within applications versus 60 hertz. Uh, keep in mind that the base 9i with the 1200p IPS display has a slightly lower color gamut. Upgradability on the 9i is limited, plus getting inside is also very challenging. Uh, you have to remove the rubber strip that's holding this laptop along with the screws underneath to pop off the bottom lid. Uh, once that's done, you can see that the memory soldered onto the PCB. The primary NVMe SSD is right over here, and the drive speeds are impressive. Uh, we got over 6.6 .6 gigabytes per second on read and over 4.4 gigabytes per second on write. So it's a very snappy drive. A lot of you might not know this, but it takes a lot of time to piece together a review video or even an explain series. One of our main sources of acquiring digital assets for our videos has been through Storyblocks. They have access to a bunch of stock footage, vector files, and music tracks that enable us to give more life to our content. If you're looking for a hassle-free experience, uh, they've got a plan that works for your budget with unlimited downloads, royalty-free content, and most importantly, diversity. If you want to learn more, click the link down below. So this is the first time that we've actually tested Intel's Core i7-1260P in a system. So I was pretty excited to see what it can do. Uh, and just to remind you, it's a lot like its bigger brother, which is the Core i5-12600H in a lot of ways, since it has eight efficient cores and four performance cores for a total of 16 threads. It just has to be tuned to run at lower power envelopes of 28 watts. And of course, that can be further tuned by laptop manufacturers like Lenovo did here. In extreme performance mode, it spikes at 64 watts and then does a bit of a dance around 30 watts before finally settling to a constant 28 watts. I wouldn't really call this extreme though, since supposedly some companies are running this little chip at 35 watts 
and higher in their designs. The regular intelligent cooling mode does some weird stuff. While it normally expected to start high and then settle down, its power actually starts off at 25 watts, falls for a while, and then hits an average of 23 watts. This is the mode that I'll be testing this thing on, by the way. And silent? Well, at 15 watts, it sips down power, and it's what I'd use if I was conserving battery power. Now, if you look at temperatures, Lenovo's up to their usual magic tricks with cooling as well, since none of the modes hits any higher than 75 degrees during longer tests. And considering how thin the 9i is, that's actually pretty impressive. But then again, the CPU never sucks back more than 28 watts on a regular basis. And if you look at clock speeds, well, it pretty much follows the power and temperature trends too. Since this is the first P-Series Auto Lake processor I've tested, it's impossible to know if these speeds are good or bad. So they are what they are for now. The nice thing about the Yoga 9i is that it stays pretty quiet regardless of the mode it's in. Even extreme performance stays on the quiet side and it's not annoying in any way. Meanwhile, intelligent cooling is super well behaved with some of the quietest full load results that I've seen from a thin and light that's not running in silent mode. Surface temperatures are also very manageable on the Yoga 9i. It doesn't get super toasty, so you shouldn't have any issues using this thing on your lap. So with that out of the way, there is another interesting thing about this laptop because Lenovo has actually done something crazy and equipped a thin and light device with a stupidly huge battery rated for 75 watt hours. I mean, that's gaming laptop territory, guys. But what does that do? Actually, not much. Even with that ginormous capacity, the Yoga only manages to tie laptops that have much, much smaller batteries. And look, a while ago, I seriously wondered about Alder Lake's battery life and whether or not there was a problem. And the more I look at these numbers, the more I think there actually is. It's not normal. Look, we've got a 75 watt hour battery on what's supposed to be an efficient processor. And while 13 hours is good, I'd expect a hell of a lot more, especially from a thin and light device like the 9i. It just feels like the Alder Lake platform either has terrible idle power needs or there's something wrong between the architecture and Windows 11. The other thing I need to mention is how Intel's treating these new lineup of theirs. They're used to be an H series or higher end laptops and an U series or ultra low voltage CPUs. The P series lies between those and offers a bit of features from both. So the 1260p isn't technically from Intel's most efficient processor series. You can actually see that here. The massive battery still doesn't allow the 9i to post anywhere near best in class numbers. Again, they're good, but not amazing like the capacity would lead you to believe. So I guess that sets the stage a bit for performance. Now, what we have over here is a processor that consumes about the same amount of power as a lot of the others in the same market, but it tends to be more power hungry when it's on battery mode. But does that translate into better performance? Let's see what we're up against. Now, our intent for this one is to have a wide variety of different thin and lights running with various CPUs and different power levels. Basically, they go from a Dell XPS 13 rocking a 13 watt i7 1185G7 to a Ryzen 7 5800U chugging along at 25 watts. All of the laptops have been updated to the latest version of Windows 11 and have been set to their default performance modes, which should give us a good cross section to compare against the All the Lake CPU set to intelligent cooling and 23 watts. Starting out with Cinebench, and it seems like the Yoga 9i is a winner in both single and multi-threaded applications. Remember, Ryzen CPUs used to absolutely spank Intel CPUs in multi-core workloads, but not anymore. Moving on to lightly threaded apps that people are most likely gonna use on something like the 9i, and again, the 1260p is able to dominate AMD's previous generation offerings and even offer a lot better performance than the best Tiger Lake had to offer. But this is something we've always seen from Intel. They're laser targeted and offering great performance in everyday programs that don't pound the CPU with heavy workload. But what happens if you wanna add a bit of that into the mix? Well, in longer workloads like Blender, the 9i really gets its butt handed to it since it doesn't maintain higher frequencies for all that long. So in quicker tests like Cinebench, it might look amazing, but extend that out to a more realistic workload length, and this happens. Handbrake is pretty much the same situation. There's a massive improvement over the 1185G7 and the 1165G7, but competing against Ryzen just doesn't happen. 
I can't wait to see what the 6000U series brings to the table this year, guys. But like last year, AMD's super late into rolling those out. But Intel does gain a pretty big advantage anywhere their integrated graphics can be used, and Premiere is a perfect example of that. Now, as we move into gaming, there's some interesting things going on here. For whatever reason, Lenovo's capping the Iris Xe integrated graphics at just 9 watts. Almost every single other laptop here has their IGPs running between 12 and 15 watts, and that makes a massive difference. Instead of leading, the 9i's frame rates are all over the place. Sometimes it's one of the best, but in a bunch of other situations, it's sitting way at the back. I've got to say, this kind of inconsistency is the last thing I want from Intel's newest architecture in an otherwise amazing little laptop. So the Lenovo Yoga 9i is overall a great little 2-in-1 device. It's comfortable to handle, it's built really well, the display is great, uh, the keyboard is nice, the webcam and microphone quality is probably one of the best that I've heard. The only problem is the Alder Lake CPU, which is very unfortunate since you don't really get the efficiency side of this architecture, even with a massive 75 watt hour battery. I really hope this doesn't keep coming up in future thin and light devices. Um, and the other thing is the price, because please just don't pay full price for this thing. If you shop carefully, you could snag one for a really good deal, or you could wait for AMD's 6000U series uh, to hit later this year. On that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're able to take away everything that you needed to know about the Yoga 9i from Lenovo. Let us know what you guys think about the P-series from Intel. Is it really that impressive? I'm curious to know. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Spend responsibly.